All right, adventurers, welcome to Alt Play. Uh, today, I'm going to be taking a look at a game called Pepper's Puzzles. Uh, I was given a code in order to play this game on the channel by the developers. Uh, so in the description below, there will be a link that can take you to where you can find this game on Steam for yourself, as well as how you can connect with the developers. Now I want to do something special with this game. Uh, in the play mode, there's three different ways to play. There's the classic mode, which is you just solving uh, Picross puzzles. Oh, by the way, these are Picross puzzles. Uh, I've done a few tutorials on Picross puzzles on the channel before. I'll have links for those in the description as well so that you can understand how to uh, solve the puzzles in like a very, a very mellow and peaceful environment. Uh, so that's classic mode, just the standard pick cross puzzles. There's, then there's also mosaic mode in which you solve several, <laughs> several puzzles in order to make one larger puzzle. And then there's time trials in which you are racing against the clock. You just want to solve as quickly as possible. I want to do something cool with this. I want to do the mosaic mode and I want to take the time over however long it takes us to solve all these puzzles. I'm going to take the time to solve them all to make one huge puzzle that looks a little something like this. Oh, she's going to explain it. In mosaic mode, you have to unveil huge pictures by solving each tile they are made of one at a time. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. We understand. All right, understand. I'll explain everything. Now, I want to do this as like a series, kind of like a series. I want to, I want to do at least one puzzle a day. If you take a look at this, I believe it's 91 different ones. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 across and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 80. That must have been the, the next puzzle. Yeah, the next puzzle is bigger. Okay. Uh, so there's 80 squares here. So if we do one puzzle a day, that's going to take us 80 days to get through all of it and solve the entire puzzle uh for this very first one i'll explain how you solve pick cross puzzles in case you didn't take the time to go see uh my previous tutorials on how to do pick cross puzzles they're not too difficult you just gotta understand what you're looking at so we'll start with this very top left corner i feel like that might be a good place to start okay yeah this isn't too bad a place to start this is this is actually we could probably do a few of these uh for an intro the idea of an intro. Okay. So whenever you do a pick cross puzzle, you're going to see a grid something like this. It doesn't have to be this exact size, but it's going to look a little something like this. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 squares across. There's 15 squares across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 squares down so this is a 15 by 15 grid okay that that's kind of important it'll be important a little bit later on mm. okay so it's a 15 by 15 grid and what we need to do is find out which of these squares need to be colored in and which ones don't it's very simple we can use the numbers at the top and the numbers on the left side to determine which squares we need to color in and which ones we don't so, for example, in this very first square, or this very first vertical line up and down, vertical line, three squares need to be colored in. In the second, one square needs to be colored in. In the third, one square needs to be colored in. And then you can use the same info going horizontally, left to right. In this fourth row, horizontally, uh, one square needs to be colored in, and so on and so forth. Now, the trick is... You can't just randomly pick which ones need to be colored in. The numbers are supposed to help you. This doesn't. This three doesn't just mean that I need to pick three squares. They also need to be three squares consecutively. They need to be three consecutive squares in this hor uh, vertical line. This is the, oops, in this column that need to be colored in. So let's see. This three means that three needs to be colored in. This one means that one needs to be colored in. And this one means that one needs to be colored in. So all these zeros mean that nothing there needs to be colored in. So one of the things we can do is we can go ahead and put an X in. We can mark those off so that we know that nothing there needs to be colored in. It goes all the way across. It goes all the way across. It goes all the way across. Fairly simple, no? So 
So all of these zeros here mean that nothing in those columns need to be colored in. So even though there's a two here in this row, these all say that these squares in that row aren't colored in. Okay, so we started with a 15 by 15 grid. This one's a little bit easier because we just brought it down from 15, 15 to three by 15. And we can probably break it down a little bit more. We take a look at these zeros here. That means there's nothing in this row either. So we can get rid of those and we can get rid of that. These zeros also mean that there's nothing in these rows. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. Now, like I said, this is a much easier puzzle because it's, it's already telling us we could get rid of all these X's, uh, get rid of all these blank squares. So let's see. Let's take a look at this three. Again, this three means that we not only need to have three squares in this column colored in, but they need to be three consecutive squares. There's only one place we can put three consecutive squares. Right there. So I colored those in. These three consecutive squares satisfy what this column needs. As you can see, the three grayed itself out. I'll show you again. I'll get rid of it. You see, it's a very, a very jet black. And when I color them in, it grades itself out because that means that it satisfies what I need. If I color this one in, it's going to go black, back to black because this column is not satisfied. It is one too many. So again, because it's grayed out, that means it's satisfied. There's no more squares in this column that need to be colored in. So we can go ahead and put an X there. The same thing has happened with this one in this row. Because we put the three for this column, it overlapped with the one that was needed for this row. So likewise, we can X those out. And the same thing goes for this row. Now this two row, this row with two, it says that it needs two squares colored in this row. Not only two squares, but they need to be consecutively colored in. We already have one. We already have one of the two because of the three that we found before. So that means if it's consecutive, it has to be the very next one. And again, it has grayed itself out. So that means the rest of that row is not needed. Now for this column, this one, we only have one available square that we haven't X'd out. That would be this one. And just like that, the puzzle is solved. Well, in most cases, when you do a pit cross puzzle, it's going to give you a picture. Again, we're solving 80 different grids, 80 different cells. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a big picture overall. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I wanted to go back. So you can see the one that we've already colored in. That one's fairly simple. That one's fairly simple. I think I'm going to grab one down here in the middle so that you can get a, a realistic look at how Pit Cross works. This, I, I, I have no idea what this picture is supposed to be. So I might be picking one that is not what we're actually doing. We'll see. Okay. So this puzzle is a little bit better. This isn't the one that I clicked the first time. I had to do a little bit of fishing. But this puzzle is a little bit better to get a look at how Pit Cross works. Okay, so once again, we have a 15 by 15 uh, grid, a 15 by 15 cell. One way that you can figure it out is by counting each individual square. Or what you can do is use these lines to help you note how many squares there are. Uh, typically, these lines uh, note that this is a 5 by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be five, five more would be 10, and that's 15. So it's a 15 by five, 10, 15. Fairly simple. Okay, so one of the, one of the key strategies to solving pit cross puzzles is figuring out where's a good place to start, figuring out a, a really good place to start. So let's see. A good place to start in a pit cross puzzle would be anywhere that has a zero, or however many squares you have vertically or horizontally. I say that because if you have zero, you know that there's nothing in that column or row. So this column here has a zero. That means there's absolutely nothing in this column that needs to be colored in. So we can go ahead and X those out. 
Same thing goes for this column. It's a zero. So there's absolutely nothing here that needs to be colored in. And those are the columns. The same thing goes for the rows. These rows all have zero. So there's nothing there that needs to be colored in. We go ahead and put X's on all of them. All right. So we started with a 15 by 15 puzzle when in actuality we took two columns off and we took four rows off. So it's not really a, if, if you want to make it seem a little less daunting, instead of a 15 by 15, we have a 13 by 11. It's a little bit easier to see. Five, 10, one, two, three would be 13. Five, 10, and one more would be 11. Okay, so we, we're working with a 13 by 11, which is a, actually a lot smaller than it, than it would seem. Okay, so we found our best, we, we've done our best to get on a good start. We got rid of the zeros, and it was a 15 by 15, but we don't have any 15s here. Uh, so where would be the next best place to start? Next place to work on your pit cross puzzle would be your biggest numbers. You typically want to work with your biggest numbers first because of something called overlapping. I'll do my best to explain it. Every time I try, it's a little bit, it's a little bit wordier than it needs to be. Okay, so if we take a look at this puzzle and we find our biggest number, our biggest number we have is a 10. Our biggest number is a 10. That means that there are 10 squares in this row 10 consecutive squares in this row that need to be colored in. 10 consecutive squares that need to be colored in. So you can use what's called overlapping to figure out where those 10 squares are or where a good amount of those 10 squares are. Let's see. You want to look at it from the very far left and the very far right because you want to find out which squares absolutely have to be colored in. Which squares in this row of 10 absolutely have to be colored in. So let's see. Let's start from the very far left. I'm going to start here and I'm going to count out 10 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is the last of that 10 that I counted from the very far left. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the right side. I'm going to start on the very far right as far as I can that I haven't marked off. And I'm going to count to the left 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we just looked at it from the very far left and the very far right. Now, if you noticed, some of those squares within both overlapped. What that means is I counted from the far left and some of those squares that were selected were also counted from the very far right. Specifically, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These seven squares were in both of them. I'll count them again really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What that tells me is that no matter how these ten consecutive squares are arranged in this row, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one have to be colored in. There's absolutely no other way to arrange the 10 consecutive squares in this row so that they can fit, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's see. I'll use these squares so that I can note them visually before I actually mark them in. So the squares are going from the left side counting to the right. And then I'm going to count back from the right side to the left. Anytime I get to a square that already has a square in it, I'm going to color it in. One, two, three, wait, let's do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That helps. That helps a little bit, doesn't it? That helps give you a little visual on it. Okay, so now what does that mean for the rest of this row? For the rest of this row, any one of these squares with squares in them can be one of the ten consecutive. It could be any one of those. We don't know this row completely yet and that's okay you don't you're not always gonna find everything immediately we can move on to other things what this 10 the what we found in this 10 so far actually helps us with a lot of the rest of the puzzle 
let's see where's a good place to explain next i guess we could explain let's work on let's work on one of these threes i want this three i want this column let's work on this column here this column has a three that means that three consecutive squares in this column must be colored in now what's cool is we already know one of the three squares it has to be this one it has to be this one so this square is either the first one of the middle squares or the last square of this three so we can use the same idea that we did here now what's interesting is we have we have to in anything that we say is possible this square has to be one of them so let's make this the very topmost square since it will fit one two and three so these three could be the three for this column let's make this the very bottom the same way we did left and right that's what i'm doing now same way we did far left and far right we're doing far top and far bottom i, I used to say far up and far down it doesn't sound right far far top far bottom so this is it with the far top let's do it with this as the far bottom this would be the third one this would be the second and this would be the first oops okay so I'm not gonna color any in because I don't know which one definitely. It could be one, two, three. It could be one, two, three. It could even be one, two, three. But what we do know is that it can't be one, two, three, four because this column only wants three squares. So this one would not be one of the ones colored in. Which also means that if this has to be consecutive, none of these will be the ones colored in as well. So we can go ahead and X those out. I'll get rid of these X's. I don't, I'm sorry, these squares. I only use the squares so I can figure out where to place things. I, I really don't like leaving them on the board because it throws me off too many different symbols. All right. Let's see. Now, if this is true, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. I want to explain one more thing before I, before I go back to that. Let's see. So far, everything that we've done has had one number in their in their uh their row or their column but if you take a look at these two rows these two rows actually have two numbers in their column what do the, what do what do what does that mean what does that mean that means that you have the first set of consecutive squares there's a gap of at least one square that doesn't have anything in it and then you have the next set so if we take a look at this four one that means that we have four consecutive squares colored in. There's a gap of at least one between that and the next set. And then there's one square covered in, colored in. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark these in real quick. I'm, this is not the exam. This is possibly not the solution. I'm just showing you real quickly. Four. So it could be one, two, three, four. There's a gap of at least one square. So let's assume that this one will not be colored in and then there's at least i'm sorry then there's one square colored in so it could be this one or it could be this one it could even be this one there has to be at least one square not colored in between this set and that set likewise this four doesn't have to immediately be at the far left there could be one square here and then it could be four then there's a gap of at least one and then the one could be any one of these. The one could be right here. All right. But like I said, that's just assuming that, uh, that that's just an explanation. That's not the answer for sure here. OK, so what I was going to say is if this is true, if this whole situation with the three in this column is true, then the same can be said about this column beside it, because it has the same it has the same thing. It already has one colored in. The three could be one, two, three. It could be one, two, three, or it could be one, two, three. But it can't be one, two, three, four. So the same is true here. And then we can say the same thing about this column and this column. All right. So another good place to start. Uh, let's see. What about these fours? Can we use the 10, the information we got from the 10 for one of these four columns? We sure can. Now it's a little bit different from what we did with the threes. We have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, 
or one, two, three, four. But what we don't have is one, two, three, four. Because this square is already colored in. Which means that it's not going to make it here. That would be five. So we can mark off the rest because they won't make it here if this one has to be colored in as well. Now, what's interesting about this puzzle, let's take a look. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Unlike the threes we had before, in this column, this four column, this square also had to be colored in in every single one of the possible scenarios for this column. So we can go ahead and mark that one in. And that also gives us a lot of information. And it's, 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 most of the time, it's just very small places you got to look at. Very small places. I'm going to get rid of these, uh, these squares. It's already starting to throw me off. All right. So, like I said, it's it's very small information. Sometimes you gotta learn how to you gotta learn how to dissect the information that's giving you, and I'm gonna help you dissect this square. What what does this square give us? It doesn't tell us anything else about this four column that we've already worked in, but it does help us with this row here, this row that has four, two. Remember, the first number there has to be a gap of at least one square that's not colored in, and then the second number. So there's four squares, four consecutive squares colored in. There's a gap of at least one square that's not colored in. And then there's two consecutive squares that are colored in. So let's use that information with what we have here. There's four squares, four consecutive squares colored in. Can it start right here? Can it start in this square? Let's see, if it starts from this square, then that would be four consecutive squares colored in. One, two, three, four. Now we have a problem. If these four would be colored in with this one that we know already is colored in, that means that we would have five, not four. So that means we know for a fact that this square is not colored in. It cannot be colored in. That would be five consecutive squares colored in. How about if we start here? One. Two, three, four. Yep, that one works. This would work. It doesn't have to be this way, but this one would work. Same thing would be one, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So what we're saying is basically any one of these four could be any one of these squares with the squares of them could be the four consecutive squares. And then we could still fit in the two somewhere, couldn't we? Remember, there has to be a gap of at least one. And then we have to put two consecutive squares in. So I think we're also done with this row for now. We'd have to come back. We'd have to come back some other time. Oh, don't forget. We did this four column. This four column also has the same scenario. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In all the possible situations, this one was colored in as well, which means that this is done, or these are done. And we can come over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This one, that one. Sometimes I try to do these without adding extra marks just so I can get my brain to skip some middle steps and work faster. Okay. So now with that information that we brought over, that helps us actually look at this puzzle or look at this row a little bit better. Remember, we said there has to be four colored in consecutively, a gap of at least one, and then two more uh, consecutively colored in. So we already said one, two, three, four was possible. One, two, three, four is possible. And one, two, three, four is possible. I'll mark those in. Just for a second. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are all possible. Is it possible for this square to be colored in by anything? We know that this square can't be colored in with the four. But could it be colored in with the two? Let's see. We're, we're taking a look at specifically this square. Okay. So in solving these columns... We actually figured out where our two is, where our two could be. One of the squares of the two 
is right here. So if it's two consecutive squares, that means it has to be the square in front of it or the square behind it, right? So does that mean that we can't possibly have this square colored in? That's exactly what it means. We have our four on this side. We have our two on this side, which means that this square is at least one of the squares between the four and the two. All right, so that helps us out a lot, actually. We can also use that same idea over here. If we know that this square is either partnered with this square or this square to make the two consecutive here, then we know that this one isn't a square colored in, and this one isn't a square that's colored in. We can also take that information that we just found that we're not coloring in this square and apply it to this three column. It'll help us with our three column. So three consecutive squares in this column have to be colored in. Here's one, and it's got an X on one side. That means that the other two of the three have to be on the other side. And as you take a, as you can see, as you take a C, as you can see, the three uh, for this column just grayed itself out. Which means that the rest of this column is all X's. We found everything for this column. Doing good. Once again, this information here, the information we just got in this column has helped us with some other information. Uh, specifically in these two rows. We now know where one of the squares of the eight is for this row. And we know where one of the squares for the four is for this row. The four is a little bit easier. The four is a little bit easier because it's a smaller number. And we already have information on that row. If we don't have info, you want to start with a big number. If we do have info, you kind of want to start with a small number. Sometimes it'll be easier, sometimes it won't. Uh, let's see. We know that four squares in this row have to be consecutively colored in. Four consecutive squares need to be colored in. And we know that this is one. So that would mean one, two, and three would make four going to the left. And one, two, three, and four. I, sh I should probably count consistently one two and three would make four going to the left and one two three would make four going to the right that means the rest of the squares in that row that four row won't be colored in they can't be colored in it is not possible and then we could take that same info and use it in the eight row right above it Let's see, because eight's a bigger number and it could fit several different ways. We're actually going to count from the far right and the far left. Let's do the far left first. One, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It just fits in from the far left. It just fits. And we're going to do it from the far right. I can already tell that there's going to be an overlap. I can already tell there's going to be an overlap because this just fit while this already has X's from the far right side so i can already tell there's gonna be an overlap i'm gonna put squares until we get to the one that's already colored in and then however far in i need to go i'm gonna color those in so that we can see which ones absolutely have to be colored in one two three four five six seven eight all right normally you can check yourself before you wreck yourself by making sure that the same amount of possible squares are on the left side and the right side. If you do, if 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 you're doing it so that you can see an overlap, there will very likely be the same amount of squares that could be colored in on the left side and the right side. Checks out. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me drag it. There we go. Alright, so let's see anything else that we found. Let's see. It looks like that We just found from the four row helps us out with this four column from before It helps us find one more square one two three four and one two three four All right, we're getting there. We're getting there Okay Let's see, anywhere else? Is there, Where's the next best area to go to? I guess we can take a look back at the three columns because the info that we found from the eight row helps us out with the three columns. One, two, three. One, two, three. But one, two, three doesn't work because that's what make four. So let's color that in. And the same thing is true for this column. And I believe we've just found our four 
from this four two row i believe we found our four from the four two row so if this is four and this is the first number that means that there's no other squares before these four that need to be colored in and the four is grayed itself out but the two is still there that's because we still need to find the two here and that's okay that's okay we can find it oh we can find it let's see hmm. where's another good where's the next best place to, to to do some work oh we can take a look at our three columns they have been grayed out in finding the four from the four two row some of our three columns have been grayed out so we can go ahead and put x's in the rest of those and now that helps us with our four row in more ways than one we know that the four has to include this square so everything before it is x's and then there's only four squares left one two three four four is grayed out and that actually helps us with three four and four that was with all of those columns let's see we have one here and one here there's one square between them and this is only one number three so the three consecutive squares have to be colored in same thing goes same thing is true for the four column one two three four and then the four column this is the lowest possible square on the four column so we can go ahead and color in the three above it one two three four and now we have found our two in our four two row so that means we could put an x here and then the three columns that we just worked in they have all been grayed out so we can go ahead and put x's in the rest of those that should help us with a lot of this a lot of the rest of the puzzle let's see let's do some work at the top let's do some work at the top let's see this row has a two so it can either be one two or one two or one two we don't know anything for the two rows just yet so we can leave those alone we can leave all these alone but this three row we actually we actually know exactly where it could be it has to be three squares consecutively there's three squares here and then there's two squares on this side so we already know that it does not fit here so we can color those in here And the same thing is true for the four row right below it. We have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. But we absolutely can't use these squares here. So we can go ahead and mark those as X's. And in both of these situations, these three squares were colored in. Or, or these three squares had to be colored in is what I'm getting at. So we can color those. And then we'll look at the four column here which just grayed itself out so we can put an X here. Let's see, there's plenty of places we can work from right now. There's plenty of places we can we can solve things. And I think slowly but surely it's going to give us our answer. Let's see. This column needs seven. This column is a pretty big number that we haven't worked in at all yet. So let's see if we can take a look there. This needs seven. We already have two here. And how many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there we go. We know that it can't fit here. So we have our seven here. Before I said that we didn't know if our twos were on this side or on this side. But now we know that since one of them is colored here, it can't be over on this side. So we can go ahead and mark all of these for these rows. We can take a look at this two column here. There's only one space for two consecutive squares to fit in. That's here. So we can X this one. Do that. Let's see. We have four and one. That means four consecutive squares in this row. A gap of at least one. And then one more colored in. We can see here that there's four squares here. Four is our first number, so we have to have four squares consecutively colored in first. This is, this square here means that at least, okay, so let's see if I can explain this. It's, it's, we'll do far left, but it needs to at least include this square here that we already have colored in. So we'll do far left, one, two, 
three, four. Or one, two, three, four. So in both of those scenarios, this square is also colored in. But it could be either this square or this square. However, in either case, we still need to find the one, which means that there needs to be a gap of at least one and then the one colored in. The only place that the one can be colored in in this row is right here, which means that we've solved the one column here. Let's take a look at this four column. We have one, two, three. We need one more. There's an X here, so it has to be here, which helps us with both the four column in this two row. Uh-oh, have we made a mistake somewhere? I think we might have made a mistake somewhere. Oh, yes. We made a mistake somewhere. Because we have a six in this column, but there's nowhere for a six to fit. So let's see. I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. Huh. Normally, problems are, are really simple to fix. They're really simple to fix. If you if you try and solve them out, they'll normally fix themselves. So actually, I don't think I'm going to go backwards anymore. I don't think from here I'm going to go backwards anymore. I think I'm going to try and solve out this six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's interesting. Let's see. So we have this two row solved. We have two here, which would mean the four needs to be here, which presents a problem with the four two. I think that can be solved really simply. If we just put this one in, that means we have to take this one out. We should solve this row again. But now we have this problem with this three. Let's put that here on the other side. Now we have a problem with the four. So let's get rid of this. Let's put this one here. Let's try that. And then maybe this one. Oh, no. Because the one's not connected to anything naturally. Let's see. If we have two here, that means this is done. This column is done. We could put the four here. This row is done. And the four would have to go here. Huh. We have seven in this part. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, we have eight here. Okay. So I'm missing two squares. Oh, I'm missing only one square. And instead of that one being here with the four, one, that one square should actually be here with the ten. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're missing one square. If we put it here, that's going to throw everything off again. So let's try it here. Here we go. Problem solving. Problem solving. Only took us 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's the cell that we did there. Okay. So like I said, in the description, there's tutorials on how to solve Picross puzzles. I'm going to be doing more puzzles, but a lot of times they're not going to be um, so explanative on what I'm doing. It's, it's sometimes going to have commentary with me talking about different things, like how I first found out about these types of puzzles. Or things I like to do in my free time, whatever. It doesn't have to be on topic. Uh, but I like to do these puzzles as kind of like, I don't want to say stress release. But as like a way of relaxing and chilling out. Uh, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. Uh, there'll be more videos like this. There will definitely be more videos like this. Like I said, I want to solve this entire thing on the channel. This could be our thing to do. If you guys enjoyed this video and would love to see more, then all you have to do is hit that red button below this video. That's that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you get notified whenever a video gets posted to the channel or whenever I do something special. Thank you guys for checking this out and I'll catch you later with more here on Alt.